Paper has been removed from the business world over the last few years, even at your company. I think you'll be surprised. Let's take a look at 10 different areas where paper has been seriously reduced. Even the staunchest opponent of automation in accounts payable or other accounting areas will agree with most of what I've outlined, or at least I think they will. Let me know in the comments below if you disagree. Stick around until the end when we discuss or I discuss one area where I believe paper still rules and will for the foreseeable future. Hey guys, I'm Mary Schaefer, founder of AP Now, your one-stop shop for cutting-edge business intelligence if you work and manage or have responsibility for the accounts payable and or payment functions. So let's dive right in. Area number one, Rolodexes, okay? In fact, some of you, if you entered the business world after, let's say, 2000, you may not even know what I'm talking about. But a Rolodex is those things, if you will, where we used to keep contact information and old business cards. Today, most people will keep their contact information in um, Outlook, in their uh, list of contacts, or on their smartphone in their address book, okay? You know, there's no need for the old-fashioned Rolodexes. Although I understand from talking to some of my colleagues that there are still a few people out there who use them. I recently threw mine away. Okay, that's number one. Number two, paper boarding passes. Um, these in domestic travel are, are almost non-existent. You certainly don't get them from a travel agent. In fact, most of us don't even have travel and agents anymore. And nobody or hardly anyone, I hate to say no one because then there's always somebody who'll prove me wrong, but is attaching these to um, expense reports like we used to in the old days. Okay, so Rolodex is uh, paper, paper boarding passes. Tax documents that we receive. And when I talk talk about this, I'm mainly thinking about accounts payable and W-9s. Um, most of your, uh, of your customers, uh, I'm sorry, your suppliers will send you a W-9 electronically. If you ask, they'll just email it back to you, though, although some people will still send the paper. Um, but even if you get them in paper, you can be scanning them. There's no reason for you to be keeping all that paper around. So um, we're there. Um, likewise, tax documents going out, 1099s and W-2s, many people are now sending them electronically. Of course, you need to get permission um, to do that before you do, but we're seeing a bigger and bigger move in, in that direction. And in fact, not that this is right, and I'm recommending it. Make me make it, let me make it clear I'm not. But I've had a few people send me 1099s um, electronically when they hadn't asked for asked for the permission. I don't really care, um, but you know. Anyway, there's that. The next thing that I want to talk about is manuals. Um, many people have turned their accounts payable policy and procedures manual into a PDF file, and that's just one of the areas um, that I'm talking about. Um, oftentimes now, manuals that typically had come with software uh, no longer come. You'll get a link to something that you can look at online, maybe a PDF that you can download online. And in fact, in some cases, there's no manual at all. It's just a series of, of videos, online videos with instructions. Um, so a lot of the manuals have gone away. Now, more um, specific, uh, one of my favorites is paper checks. Um, while we still have a lot of them in accounts payable, especially in the B2B space, don't get me wrong, we've seen a great reduction in the number of paper checks, mainly with payments that are going to uh, now be made on ACH, but they can also be uh, payments that are made on uh, P cards. So while we still have far too many paper checks. Let me be clear about that. We are seeing um, a, a nice reduction and hopefully that will continue. Next area related um, is paper invoices. Even companies that have not automated their accounts payable or their invoice processing are still um, uh, encouraging or we're telling people to encourage their suppliers to send them their invoices via uh, email rather than uh, to be mailing them in the mail. There are several reasons for this. Uh, the mail has gotten uh, slower than we would like. Um, there's no invoices lost in the mail. If it has to be replaced, it can be replaced very simply. And we've got a lot of best practices around how you should be receiving invoices um, electronically, you know, via email. So great reduction in the number of invoices coming out. And just as an aside, if you're getting your invoices by email and you're encouraging people to do that, please don't be printing them out. You're giving back some of that uh, cost savings, if you will, or that efficiency uh, savings. So hopefully 
if you're you're getting them by email, you're not uh, printing them out. But big, huge reduction in that area. And uh, the last time we looked at statistics, um, over 70% of invoices are now coming in um, either through email, mostly through email, but uh, through portals of some sort. And of course, uh, just as an aside, some of these invoices that are being emailed in are automatically being pushed out to an automation solution without um, any need to to print. So we're we're really go- doing a lot towards going uh, paperless when it comes to invoices. Um, next thing that I want to talk about is statements. Um, e- even just personally, many banks will now um, email you when you know your statement is ready. It's online. You can download a PDF if you want. Yeah, you can print it out. But um, so statements, and we're seeing in the accounts payable space, vendor statements, statements from banks, all sorts of statements um, moving away from the paper, uh, moving online. Um, so some sort of an electronic file. Um, all sorts of notices are now coming through the mail that used to come through the mail are now coming through email. So less, less uh, paper there. And then copies, when you have to send to copies, um, of practically anything, you can either scan it um, or you can just produce a PDF. So for example, um, you have your policy and procedures manual. And if you would just want to send one or two pages, you can just print it to a PDF and send it out. Um, but if, you know, somebody wants to, needs a copy of uh, a payment, you know, to prove when they, when you got it or anything else like that, you just scan it and you send the PDF. We, we're really getting away from putting things in the mail, which saves you postage and um, it saves you having to buy envelopes, um, et cetera, and uh, producing a PDF. So uh, maybe one of the greatest inventions towards um, accounts payable productivity would be whoever created PDFs in the first place. Now, those are the items, the areas that I've come up with, but you may have come up with some others on your own. And if you have come up with other areas where you've eliminated paper in your APP process, please let us know and share it in the comments below. That way we can all benefit from it. And I thank you in advance if you are willing to share something of that nature. Now, before we get to the one exception where I think paper still rules, I'd like to share with you that here at the AP Now channel, we have over 300 videos in our library um, with new accounts payable and payment uh, items being added every Tuesday and Thursday. And we're adding some shorts on other days. And when I say short, I really mean short. They're under a minute each. Occasionally on Saturdays, we have a little wordle fun. So please check out our library of uh, past videos after you finish this one. So what is this one exception that I've been talking to talking about? For me, it's books. Um, I still read books in paper format, okay? Even though I have a Kindle, um, it was a gift. I I got it um, quite a few years ago. It was one of the first ones when they first came out with it. And while I can see the advantages of it, and there are advantages of it, there's something about holding a paper book. And so you'll still find me perusing the shelves at Barnes and Nobles or in secondhand bookstores or even online when I uh, buy books from Amazon, which I do periodically. I buy the book. I don't buy the electronic um, version. What about you? Are you the same or have you made the switch um, to some sort of electronic reader? Let us know in the comments below. Now, this session is part of our Accounts Payable Best Practice playlist, which includes eight longer videos like this and about 25 short items. Each of those is less than one minute. You can watch them all right now using a link um, that will appear momentarily on your screen and on YouTube and is in the show notes below. As always, we appreciate your thumbs up, your comments, your shares, and your subscribes.